Hi everybody and welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. So I'm back. Um, it's been a long time since I made a video I feel like because we went for a vacation. We ended up coming home a day early. We were supposed to come home Saturday but we ended up coming home Friday because the on Friday the cape was just kind of like cloudy and we're like we're not gonna get to the beach anyways so we're just gonna sit here all day and that's silly so we decided to come home the day early instead of coming home at like 6 a.m. on Saturday so then we get home Saturday and that was a long day and it was just kind of like we needed a break from being awake for so long a break from a break but like we just needed to like relax and then Yesterday we had a wedding and I was like planning on filming yesterday but like time got away from us because we were getting ready for the wedding and now it's Monday morning so here I am. So this is a since vacation wrap up so at least like since I last saw you kind of wrap up. Um, I have a ton of books to share with you which is why I needed to make sure that I filmed this. What is this? I just found something on the ground. I don't know what it is. Um, so yeah let's just get started. The first book is um, Songs for the Missing by Stuart Onan. I read this book before we left on vacation. Um, I was just in the mood to, um, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was just in the mood for kind of a suspenseful book. Um, I was going to pick a book from this shelf and this book caught the corner of my eye and I was like, wait a minute, this has suspense, maybe this will be really good. And I really did not enjoy this book. This is about a girl. She goes missing. Um, and it's basically about her family side of it. Like what they're doing while she's missing. And I did not enjoy this book at all. It was very slow moving. There was nothing like keeping you going. It wasn't like they were finding clues. Like there was a whole chapter about like he decided to go fishing one day and it was all about him fishing and I was like okay this is not cool. I we did not get an answer by the end of the book. I don't know what happened to her really. Um, like you find out something but like you don't find the backstory about what really went down which is always my favorite part is finding that out at the end and that just wasn't there. So it just felt like a lot of nothing. Um, I think I gave this book one or two stars. I just, I couldn't enjoy it, which is sad. And then right before I left on vacation, I started The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier because I was like, I've had this book since it came out. I pre-ordered it. It's been a year basically since I read The Wrath and the Dawn. Um, so I was really excited to get to it and then I started it. And then I start. I brought this book in the car with me, even though I knew I was not going to bring this on the beach because it's hardcover and I basically paid full price for it, so I was not about to bring it on the beach. But, um, so I started reading it, I read it in the car, and I was bored to tears. I did not enjoy the first half of this book. I don't know what it was. I think it was just a combination of all the different names and things, and I was just confused, and I just did not enjoy it. But then I picked it back up Saturday, so yesterday morning. Was it yesterday morning? Yeah, no, Saturday morning, so not yesterday morning. Saturday morning, and I finished it, and I really enjoyed the second half. So I gave it three stars because I didn't enjoy the beginning, but I really enjoyed the ending. So, I don't know. I finished this duology, I guess. So, yeah. I don't know why it sounds so silly today. Um, then I read The Lies We Told by Diane Chamberless. This was my first book that I read on vacation officially, um, because I decided since I wasn't enjoying the first half of this that I was just going to keep reading my, my vacation books and then finish that when I got back. So this was the first book I read. This is probably my least favorite Diane Chamberlain book that I've read. I didn't read the synopsis until about 100 pages in, and... Then I was like really angry about the synopsis. It's about this married couple. They've been trying to have a child. They keep miscarrying. They're both like doctors. Like they're both in the medical field. And she's got a sister who's also in the medical field. And when they were younger, something tragic happened to them. Their parents were both murdered. And um, so basically the older sister like took care of the younger sister. Um instead of letting her go to foster care. So this is like fast forward to the future, obviously, like I said, marriage, whatever. So the older sister, now what she does is she kind of goes to like 
tragedy. So, like, if a hurricane comes, she goes and she helps um, the, the sick and the dying at that tragedy. So, um, there's this one tragedy, I think it's not Hurricane Katrina, but there's, like, a hurricane that hits North Carolina, and um, the sister... And the husband decided to go. And the husband calls his wife and is like, hey, you need to come. And so she, like, doesn't want to, but she comes. And then she ends up in a plane that crashes. And they assume she's dead. And they kind of, like, the sister and the husband kind of start to get together. I feel like the synopsis, like, I didn't spoil anything because that's all in a synopsis. And I feel like the synopsis is very least spoilery, but, like, I feel like I'm not spoiling you because it's, you could read it for yourself right here. And that bothers me because it spoils almost everything. I really don't like the fact that the husband and the sister got together. That really irritates me because that's just disgusting. And it's not like she was missing for that long either. So that kind of grossed me out. And the epilogue was ridiculous. I can't, like, say anything else without spoiling it, but, like, I don't know. I just didn't enjoy this book at all, so I gave it three stars, but it was probably my least favorite. Then I picked up The Castaways by Ellen Hildebrand, and I really enjoyed this book. I was so scared because everybody was commenting that this is probably their least favorite Ellen Hildebrand book, and I was like, oh, no, I'm in trouble, but it ended up being really good. Um, it follows this, like, group of friends, um... There's four couples, and one of the couples is trying to save their marriage, so they, like, f um, are taking a boat to another island, to, like, a vineyard for their anniversary, trying to save their relationship, and they end up passing away. There's, like, a big wreck with their boat, and they pass away. And it's, like, their friends' stories of them dealing with it and trying to figure out if there was some shadiness of what went down in this wreck if it was something more sinister than it appeared and I thought it was really good I was really engaged and really intrigued to find out what was happening it took me a little while like I really wanted like a map of like who was married to who because there's so many of like I'm married to him but I actually like that one and that one's married to this one but this one really likes this one and it was like kind of confusing with that but like once I got it in my head who everybody was and what their relationship to everybody was I really enjoyed it, so I gave this book four stars. And then I picked up the Nora Roberts trilogy. Well, it's not a trilogy, it's a series. This is the Calhouns, this is Catherine's, Amanda's, and Lila's story. And I really enjoyed this. I gave this book five stars. It's funny because I bought this book at my library not that long ago. But years and years ago, back when Borders was a thing, I have read Susanna and Megan's story, which is actually apparently book four and five to book one, two, and three. So I picked this up when I went home to get Bella. So I was like, now I could finish the series and it will make so much more sense than when I was, this was like years ago, like when I was still in college reading book four and five. So I was like, now it all makes sense. Not that this didn't make sense, but now, like, I can unite it and make one big John story. So, I finished this. I love this. This takes place in Bar Harbor, Maine. It's about these sisters and their aunt. They live in a place called the Towers, and they are at the chance of losing the Towers because of money issues. And so, the first book follows Catherine or Cece and, um... They have kind of, the aunt kind of has invited this um, hotel guy to come because he wants the towers to buy it. And obviously, each sister has her own love story kind of thing. And there's another plot with um, there's these emeralds, and other people are after these emeralds because they don't even know where the emeralds are. But if they can find the emeralds, it's a big deal. I don't know. I still really love it. It's very, like, easy. They're, like, seriously, like, two-week relationships. But they are so just easy and lighthearted and easy to read. And I love it. So I gave it five stars. And then when we got home, so, like, Sunday, I picked up Mystic Summer by Hannah McKinnon. I gave this book five stars as well. I really, really enjoyed this book. It's just, it suited my needs of what I needed yesterday. It follows this woman named Maggie, and she is an elementary school teacher, so 
Hello. Um, I instantly related to her. Um, she works in Boston and she has this life there, her best friend who's getting married, she has a boyfriend, and then she goes back to Mystic for a little bit because that's where she is from originally. So obviously I love it because Mystic is in Connecticut and I live in Connecticut, so related again. And she kind of starts talking to one of her ex-boyfriends who has now moved back to Mystic and kind of that story. And I really, really enjoyed this. This is just an easy, like don't go into it expecting like the best book ever, but like if you're going into it for a beach read, something simple, I think you will totally love it and enjoy it like I did. So five stars for this. And then I just realized I have two books to haul. I know I said I was not going to buy any books, but I did because um, I was on vacation. I went to two local bookstores there that are kind of like mom and pop bookstores, so I have to support them because there's not many of them around. Like, granted, I understand they're in a beach town, so they probably get a lot of business, but I figured I would just try it to do it anyway. So I got Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis. I got this in Dennis, Massachusetts um, at... The Armchair Bookstore. Oh, he gave me a bookmark. Literally the best. Um, I just figured I would get this book because I'd rather spend $18 on a hardcover than $18 on a paperback kind of thing. That's what my mindset was there. This is a very little story. They don't really have, you don't know what they'll have. It was just kind of like random um, book selection. But I figured it has to do with the sea. You're at the Cape. I would grab it, especially because I really enjoyed Out of the Easy by her, so I figured this has been getting a lot of praise lately, so I would try this one out. And then we went to Chatham, which also had a bookstore. It was part used bookstore, part um, regular bookstore, so I picked up The Last Letter from Your Lover by Jojo Moyes. Um, I also bought this really cool um, bookmark. I think they also gave me a bookmark. Um, the Yellow Umbrella Bookstore. Um, so that's that. Um, I have not read anything by Jojo Moyes at all. Um, I know obviously she's been getting a lot of love from me before you and I'm really scared to read that book. I just, I'm scared out of my mind. So I figured if I read another book by her that's maybe not as hyped, maybe if I like this one I will then eventually try that one out because maybe then I know she's not just hyped that she's actually really good. So, yeah, this the back of this sounded really good. Um, I can't exactly remember what it's about now. Hold on. Um, 1960, Jennifer Sterling wakes up in the hospital and remembers nothing, not the car accident that put her there, not her wealthy husband, not even her own name. Searching for clues, she finds an impassioned letter simply signed B from a man whom she seemed willing to risk everything. In 2003, a journalist, Ellie Hosworth, not Hawsworth, Haworth stumbles upon an old letter containing a man's ardent plea to his married lover. She becomes obsessed with finding out what happened to the couple. Perhaps if they lived happily ever after, her own complicated affair could have, ha ha could have a happy ending too. A brief encounter for our time. This is a novel for romantic at every age. So, sounds interesting. If you know anything about this, please let me know. And